ready to go with another day of USWA Championship Wrestling. Oh, boy, we are ready to go. We've got the Moon Dogs and Richard Lee. They're going to be here today. They're scheduled in the opening bout. Harlem Knights, they're going to be here. The big guys from Harlem, they're going to be here today. Jeff Jarrett in a single bout. His opponent, Doug Gilbert. Should be a good single bout. Oh, you're Jeff absolutely and right. And, um, boy, we've got a full uh, program today. Let me tell you, you want to stick around for all of them. No doubt about it. It's a bit... Oh, my goodness. Sen sensational Sherry Mark. Oh, boy. Lance Russell, is that you? It's not Lance. That's Corey. You have, brother, you got to stab that candy bear. That causes cancer. What? Yeah, but... What? Why, why are you... Why are you here? I, I, Why am I here? I well, let me see. If being a part of the World Wrestling Federation and the big star that I am, I'm always looking for any and every challenge that can pass in my way. Now, I have three things to say. Okay. One? Number one, there is a lady here. Maybe not a lady. Maybe a tramp. What? Yeah, that's what I said, a tramp. And she holds your lady's title. I happen to be a collector of titles and many other things, might I add. So, therefore, I want to see what I can do about getting my little hands into her. Secondly, I've been scouting all over the world looking for new boy toys. Come here, sweetie. Come here. Come here, sweetie. Yeah, come here. Oh, Brian Christopher, oh. new boy toy, huh? You tell me, I tell me, girls, is this sweet or is this sweet? What, what, what's your name, sweetheart? My name is Brian Christopher. Brian Christopher, what are, what are you doing here with these no-going-aware people? And there's obviously no competition here. You're exactly so, right. You're exactly you should, right. You should, you should really, really think of coming back to the, to the WWF with me, Brian. You really should because, darling, you're just a sweetie and you got nice... Thing. <laughs> okay. Okay. So you know that. okay, I got one more thing. To All say. right, number three. I'll, I'll see you in just a minute, okay, sweetie? Wait back there for me. I got one more thing to say. I want everybody to stay tuned. Stay tuned. Because Sensational Sherry has a surprise for everyone. Stay tuned. We'll find out about the surprise. Roy buses Doug Gilbert. Passes, Doug gets up, he goes back down. Jeff whips him into the road. Lets him up and right down, face first into the mat. He's got him covered. One, two, oh, look out, Jeff. Here comes uh, King and Dahl. King and Dahl. Rex King and Steve Dahl have just jumped Jeff Jarrett when Jeff was a half count away from having a victory on Doug Gilbert. Now Gilbert walking around smiling, inviting yeah. King and Dahl to beat up on Jeff Jarrett and now joining in with him here. We got to get some help for Jeff. It's three against one. King and Dahl and Doug Gilbert jump. Oh, and here look comes at this. Brian Christopher in now celebrating and he's going to join the fray, it looks like. Oh! Well, they shove him back. Yeah. Knock Plus, him out of the way. Plus Christopher right in the door, it looks like. And, uh, hey! Are you idiots? I was coming in there to help you. Hey, you idiot! Nobody hits me. You're gonna pay for that. I was coming in to help you, you idiot. Nobody hits me. You'll pay. You'll pay. The word for Brian Christopher. Steve Whoa. Dahl just turned, and he didn't really turn around all the way. He just nailed Brian, who was coming in from behind him. And then he and Rex King continue to beat up on Jeff Jarrett, as Doug Gilbert and Rex King do now. Yeah. Hey, let me tell you people something right here and right now. This is how it goes around here. Brian Christopher. Nobody got to hit the boy. Let me tell you something. We simply divide in the ring. Nobody. Not you. Not a big mouth like Jeff Sherry. Nobody. Everybody falls. Don't mess with simply divide, baby. Word from Steve Dahl, Rex King here too, as they're trying to help Jeff Jarrett out of the ring. You know, we're sitting out here, hearing Jeff Jarrett talk about how he thought we was nice guys. Well, it's changed, Jeff Jarrett. We sit here and listen to you run your pretty boy mouth for the last time. Yeah, Dave, look like they got uh, Jeff right yeah, in they the got him, there. Yeah, they got him on the stretcher, helping him, him out of here now. Yeah. Eddie and uh, everybody, and uh, got to take him out. 
Now look out, there goes Dahl climbing back into the ring. Oh, he jumps up. He, he jumps out of there onto Jeff on the stretcher. And now Eddie Marlin is sending him out of here. I don't know what he told him, but man, he sent him right out of here after they did that. Well, let's, that's just ridiculous, Dave. Let's, let's get, let's Jeff, get Jeff out of here right yeah. now. Let's, let's, uh, let's take a break. We'll be back in just a moment. Big knee lift by Rex King has put the Avenger down on the mat, and he doesn't show much signs of, uh, of putting up an offensive battle here. It's been all. Oh, oh. Look, look at this, Jeff Tanner. Hey, look at this. Not only Wait. Jeff Tanner, but Christopher. Christopher. Oh, boy. Christopher and Tanner go out to simply divine Rex King and Steve Dawes. Look at this. Speechless. I don't believe. I don't believe it here. Now, Dave Brown, I know you got that funny look on your face like you don't know what's going on. Well, let me just tell you what took place in the back. Brian Christopher came running up to me and he said, Jeff Jarrett, I got a deal for you. I got the biggest deal I've ever had for you. And Dave, you know, as well as I do, as well as the people know, sometimes Brian's deals are good, sometimes they're bad. Sometimes they don't work, and sometimes they work. He came up and he said, Jeff, he said, let me take Wendell Cooley's place. Let me be your partner. That's exactly right. That's what he said, David. I know you're looking speechless as well as I was in the back. Now, I've never, ever believed one thing this guy has said. All he, all he knows how to do is lie. But today, I believe it. I believe that he hates Rex King and Steve Dahl as bad as I do. And Dave, I've already cleared it with Eddie Marlin in the back, and the match is signed. That's right, Jeff Jarrett and Brian Christopher, not Jeff Jarrett versus Brian Christopher, Jeff and Brian against Rex and Steve, and boys, I can't wait. That's Jeff Jarrett, don't you worry. I still hate you. I still hate you, Jeff Jarrett. And as a matter of fact, I'm going to take back the Southern Heavyweight title before it's all said and done. But first things first, Rex King and Steve Dahl, I don't know who you think you are, but you done mess with the wrong person. You done laid your hands on me, and nobody, and I mean nobody, lays their hands on me and gets away with it. This week, Jeff Jarrett and myself are going to take you boys and give you a beating of your life because you don't know what I can do. But I'm going to show you what I will do this week. You understand me? Mark my words. You'll pay for messing with me. We've had some unusual pairings in the USWA, but none more unusual than Jeff Jarrett and Brian Christopher together. We'll be back with last time Macho Man Randy Savage and Jerry Lawler met. Look at what happened. Savage climbs the top ropes. He's up on the top one and comes down with that flying elbow. One, Lawler kicks up and on. The King back on his feet. And Savage hightails it out of there quickly. Oh, boy, look up. Savage throws him over the railing, onto the table, slams down on him with a unified world heavyweight title. Leaves over the rails and goes after Savage. Macho Man from the World Wrestling Federation. Oh, yeah! Get your scrawny butt back in this Memphis, Tennessee ring for two minutes, and I'll show you what it's all about. Oh, you a gutless coward! But Savage, boy, I don't know if he's going to accept. He's out there and got the unified world title. Well, i out in the ring telling Savage, hey, bring it on for just two more minutes. Hey, hey, hey. Sorry. 
good moment out here now. Brother, you're in trouble. You little punk. Joe, you're in trouble too. Well, as you can see, it ended up not a very satisfying yeah, night for the macho man, Randy Savage, last trip to town. He sent in this interview. Here's what the macho man had to say. Oh, yeah. Macho money is a reality. Thank you, the attorneys and the lawyers. Promoter Eddie Marlin, you didn't want this to happen. King Jerry Lawler, you wish that this wouldn't happen, but it is, yeah. This is the final final. This is the end of the road. Another one bites the dust. A big steel cage match, yeah. Nobody gets in, nobody gets out. Non-sanctioned by the World Wrestling Federation. Non-sanctioned by the USWA. Anything goes, yeah. We got a date, Lawler. Don't be late, yeah. And promoter Eddie Marlin, I, I want you to know something. You made a big, big, big mistake when you put your hands on me. Big surprises. Macho Monday. Freak out, freak out, big steel cage. It's over, it's over. No more, no my burn, baby burn. Macho Monday is a reality, yeah. Macho Monday is on the way too. Somebody else that's on the way right now is the king. Here he comes. He's the one that's got that unified title. He's the one that's got the crown and he is headed this way right now, I'm sure. He's got a couple of words about the macho man, Randy Savage. Oh, yeah, I got a couple of words for you, macho man. We're going to get ourselves locked in a big, nice steel cage down at the Mid-South Coliseum. Monday night, you're right. You want to call it Macho Monday, that's fine with me. Because you see, macho man, you can talk real tough when you're somewhere up in New York standing behind a camera and sending those interviews down here to Memphis. But we're going to see how tough you are when we get face-to-face -face inside the steel cage Monday night. Now, the last time he was in Memphis, he came down here. He told everybody that it was going to be Black Monday, that he was going to take my title back to the World Wrestling Federation with him. Well, let me tell you something, Macho Man. Let me remind your little feeble brain of something. Do you see this right here? It ain't been to the World Wrestling Federation. It's been right here around my waist, where it belongs, and where it's going to stay. Now, like I said, he knows good and well that I am right here each and every Saturday. If he wanted to do all that talk, tough talking, why don't he come down here, face me face to face, instead of sending in his interviews and doing what he's going to do? Oh, boy, come on. Uh, sensational Sherry is headed back this way. Sherry Martell. Uh, get out of here. Would you just get out of here? Well, well, well. If it isn't Queen Lawler. You know, you've got a lot of nerve talking about the only real man in the whole wide world. And that is the macho man Randy Savage. Oh, yeah, right. You sat down here and little no good for nothing hillbilly Hicktown, Memphis no going where Tennessee, where the home of that no good for nothing legend Elvis Presley was born at on top of that. And you call yourself a champion and you say the macho man is a pea brain? Where do you get off, little man? I have I have stood up against more men then you will ever stand up against anything in your life. And it is that that I can whip most men in this business. Hey, Lance, I see you back there, too. And for another thing, not today, not any other time in this lifetime, or the next, or the one before, or anywhere in your little feeble mind, will you ever beat macho man Randy Savage? Now, what do you think about that, smarty pants? <laughs> well... 
Let me say something to you, sensational, Sherry. You say you could whip most men in professional wrestling. Well, let me just assure you of one thing. I ain't one of them, sweetheart. You understand that? So don't come out here with all that little tough talk of yours. Don't start running your mouth. And as far as you calling yourself sensational, Sherry, that's got to be about the biggest joke that I have ever heard. Let me tell you something. Let me ask you a little question. I want all of y'all to see if you know the answer to this. You know what the difference is between sensational Sherry and garbage? No, 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 no. There is a difference. The difference between sensational Sherry and garbage is garbage gets picked up occasionally. <laughs> Boy, she, she has made a big mistake. She's made the king mad. Yeah. Whoa. Ooh. Hey, look out. No, 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 King. No, 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 hey, pile king. driver. No, no, oh, no. Look out. Oh, look out. Randy Pick Savage. Savage. Randy Savage just grabbed the king from behind. Savage and Sherry, sensational Sherry, jump on the king in there. Savage, I don't know where Dave. I just came and jumped him from behind. He had said in an interview, and that come on, Randy. This must be the surprise. Oh, come on, oh, come, come on. on. Teddy Marlin out there. Thank goodness Eddie got here when he did and stopped that pile driver. Yeah. And now Sherry yelling at Eddie. Yeah. Now, now, all right, Eddie has told him to get out of here. I look at Sherry kicking Lawler again, and Savage says, yes, sir. Look out, he nails Eddie from behind. Oh, boy. Hey. Savage jumping on Eddie Ball as the Jason O'Shea. Hey, hey, hey. On the key. Come on, Randy. Oh, boy. Yeah, get, get, get. Yeah, get some security. Yeah, yeah get some here. help. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. Get security to get the Savage out of here. Oh, my God. Savage. Seven security. Yeah, we'll get security to get him out. Let's uh, hey, roll the brake. Roll the brake. She is right here. The fans love her as she heads over here to talk to us about some of the action in the USWA. Miss Texas. Yes, say. I'd like to say something. Sherry Martell. You think by coming down here, you're going to take over? I don't think so. Because you have to go through me first, tough girl. Now, don't let my size underestimate you. Because I'm tougher than you think I am. Watch out. Here she comes. Hey, Sherry Martell, we have seen far too much of her here today. All right, she's taking off the high heels. Excuse me if I get a little bit comfortable with this. So you're Miss Texas. You got that right. You got the USWA title. There you go. There right? You go, right? Yeah. Well, I tell you what. You're in Memphis, Tennessee, not in Texas, so that makes you unofficial. And oh, another really? thing. Oh, yes, oh, really? And another thing. Let me ask you, where did you get that outfit? No, well, let, let me ask you. Whoa! Woman, you got your clothes at Kmart, am I not Where'd right? Where did you get yours from, a garage sale? No, I hadn't oh, had yeah. mine personally. And okay. one other thing about, do those weeds in your head compensate oh, for your lack of brains and everything else? Let me ask you. Oh, 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 boy! Oh, no. Hey, oh, yeah, Dave. Oh, look out. Oh, boy. Oh, Sherry. Grabs Miss Texas. Yes, it's just. Oh, come on, Jerry. Oh, yeah. come on. Goodness, great hook. Come on, Jerry. What you looking at? Hey, hey, hey. Throws Miss Texas over the desk here. Sensational Jerry Martell. Oh. Imagine Miss Texas. 
expects and trying to fight back. Gary Marshall, look out. Nealder again with a big right hand. Miss Texas in trouble against Sherry Martell here. Eddie Marlin is saying, get out of here, don't put your hand on her again. And Sherry Martell saying that she's going to leave with an insult for all of us yeah. as she does. Oh, that jump. What a... We'll be back with more USWA action after this. You stay with us, fans. The Young Stallions, uh, thank you guys for coming by here, Bill and Steve Marino, and uh, we're glad to have you in the USWA. Your reputation uh, has preceded you and uh, sounds good. Uh, yeah, we're tickled to have to be here because this is where the hotbed of wrestling is at and where the toughest competition is. And me and my brother want to come down here and, and prove to people what we could do here. Well, very good. We're glad to have you here. And there are a couple of teams around. We could sure use your help. So we're, uh, we're looking forward to seeing you in action up here today and uh, at, at other times, too. Yeah, uh, like you said, there's tough competition down here. And we come down here planning on doing some big things and getting some title shots and hopefully get some belts around our waist for we, you know, before it's over with. All right, very good. Well, now, your, co your competition uh, in here includes people like uh, PG-13. You know anything about PG-13? Uh, not a whole lot. Uh, we don't know them personally, but we hear a lot of rumors through the countryside about them. You know, they like to beat up women and slap women around. And, you know, a couple of little punks, you know, that uh, really can't wrestle. You know, they've been hitting people with have a hubcap I've been hearing, you know, been watching on the television. And, and uh, it kind of makes me sick to even watch them. Well, that's, I think you've, uh, you've got, speaking of PG-13, here they are. Now, Jay, come on, you guys. This is their interview time. I don't care who did it. What's up with Sheila, the Wonder Horse, and Cowboy Bob, man? What's up with you guys calling us punk? But you don't know me from Adam, suck. I'll slap that cowboy hat right off your head, Redneck. Oh, serious. Now, hold up, hold up. Hold up. What'd they say their last name was, man? what did he say his last name was? Marino. Marino. Right there. That's an Ital Italian cowboy. Italian, Italian cowboy. cowboy. My great great granddaddy told me there wasn't no such no thing as no Italian, Italian cowboy. cowboy. Oh, so you out here telling lies and stuff, huh? Yeah, yeah. Call us punks. Yourself, you don't know what. Hey, listen. As far as I'm concerned, you look like punks, you act like punks, you slap women around. We got a match next week. But we don't have to wait till next week. We can do it right here in the ring. We'll kick your butts right now. Well, looks like PG 13's accepting the challenge. Yeah, Into the like ring goes Wolfie D and JC Ice. And Bill and Steve Marino head right in there. There's a referee coming in there. Uh, referee Kevin Christian is there. Oh, look at this. PG 13 sending Marino. Look at him duck under that. Yeah. And a good drop kick. Yeah, big double kick from the Marinos. Bill and Steve. And look at him go to work on PG 13. And all of a sudden. There goes J.C. Ice and Sir Wolfie D out here quickly. Well, PG-13 all of a sudden uh, may be a little bit more impressed with the young stallions, Bill and Steve Marino, as they look mighty good. Yeah. And, uh, you know, uh, the PG-13 wasted no time in accepting the challenge. They headed into the ring. They wasted no time in getting out of there <laughs> after uh, after the young stallions. Uh, oh, 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 here. Now. Here comes a couple of more guys that don't lack for confidence. The king of rock and roll, self-proclaimed, Doug Gilbert. What's he got? He's got a new set of tights. Looks like he's got, uh, got Elvis records uh, named on, uh, on the sides there. Uh, the, Dave, the king of rock and roll is back to greet my lovely fans. Dave, and look how beautiful audience today. They want now, we have a beautiful audience, but I saw some head shaking over there when they were talking about being your fans. I don't think they'll agree with that. Scotty Flamingo is partner. This one has the makings of a good match. You got two tough wrestlers in Scotty Flamingo and Doug Gilbert. And across the way, the Young Stallions. This will be our first look at them on USWA Championship Wrestling. But uh, so far, they have looked pretty good in, uh, in dispatching PG-13 back to the dressing area. As soon as we get the signal from the referee, we're ready to go. And there it is, Scotty Flamingo. Uh, Doug Gilbert says, uh, watch, because we're not PG-13. We'll see. Bill Marino starting off for the Young Stallion. Scotty the Body Flamingo starting off for his team. Bill goes over to the ropes and...
catches Flamingo on the top. Turnbuckle rolls him up there. One, two, and Flamingo kicks out. Shot kick from Bill Marino. Ah, got it, Flamingo nails him with a right hand. Goes over and tags. The king of rock and roll, Seth Brooklyn, king himself. Doug Gilbert and tag from the Marinos in there. The young Hanging in and out, looking good. Good tag team action there, and uh, you know, that's very important to win a tag team match. You gotta know where your partner is, when he's available, how to get to the corner to get the tag on the fresh man to get him in there. We saw the teamwork in action from the rear Marinos with the uh, double drop kick against PG-13 and that little impromptu confrontation just before the match started here. And uh, let's see if they continue that teamwork. If, it, it, oh, it was a I'm begging these guys to quit cheating. There was no cheating going on. That's a word from Scotty Flamingo over here. Complain, complain, complain. And I, there, I didn't see any uh, bullet no, fights. I, did you? I see hair pulling, and that's yeah. Doug Gilbert doing that's it. That's exactly right what I see. Tag Flamingo, he comes in, kicks away. Double teaming back in the corner. What about that, Flamingo? The referee trying to get him to back off yeah, one at a time. Uh, and now here's Doug Gilbert over. That's what the difference between, between being able to do it all. Watch this right here. Yeah, being able to interfere is what you all are doing in there, Doug. Being able to go two against one, being able to pull hair, being able to hold him up on the floor while Scotty Flamingo drops down on him yeah. from the ring apron. Yeah, right, that's being able to do it all almost. And Doug Gilbert just throws Steve Marino, the young stallion, back in the ring. All right, Doug Gilbert celebrating on the apron, doing the dancing and uh, oh, top of the boot to the midsection. Doug Gilbert with a big chop. Yeah. Chops Marino and uh, Marino set on his feet. He's trying to get over to get a tag on his brother there. Bill Marino, oh, and Doug Gilbert. He's him, jobs him right down in the mat there, too. Steve Marino in trouble. He needs to somehow get to the corner and get the tag on his brother, Bill. The Young Stallion in their first official match in the USWA. And Doug Gilbert and Scotty Flamingo not taking it easy on him, either. Double teaming on Steve. Boy, they flip him up high. And he, boy, what a long ways to fall for Steve Marino. Doug Gilbert drops down on him and just what a humiliating tactic over there to Bill Marino. Oh, man. Doug Gilbert says he doesn't, had, doesn't, hasn't even messed his hair up yet. Hair still looks good after all this tough match, he says. I say, oh, look at that. Yeah, better watch out for the Marino. Steve goes over to get the tag on Bill Marino. Comes in, and he's clearing him out. Going out to Doug. Oh, look my God. out. Look out. Here goes BG-13. Christian Reverie calls for the bell. J.C. Ice with that hubcap goes over Clover Steve Marino and it's PG-13 Gilbert and Flamingo and I guess the Young Stallions in their day. The Young Stallions look like they had it won against the team of Scotty Flamingo and Doug Gilbert. They had the upper hand, no doubt about it, and all of a sudden, hubcap in hand, here comes PG-13, J.C. Ice, and Wolf McGee. That's what them dinosaur cowboys get. You mess with PG-13. That's what cowboy Bob and Jim were doing. That's what they deserve. That's what they deserve. You come in here with a hubcap and you jump them. It's four against two when you jump yeah, in there like that, you guys. Really? Me and Wolfie, me and Wolfie, that's all we need. Three teams, 13 and a half. Get it up, horses. It's a different story when it's two against two, when it's PG-13 against the Young Stallions. Yeah. The Young Stallions have the upper hand. Yeah, the Young Stallions didn't want to listen to all of that hoopla that PG-13 was talking out here. And just signed over on J.C. Ice and Whoopi D. And they're out on the floor going at it. Uh, Eddie Marlin's out now. Yeah, the referee and Eddie trying to get it separated. All right, Eddie says he'll get it separated. We'll be back. 
after this. Stay with us. I can't wait. Uh, did you already mention who else is going to be over there? Yeah, as a matter of fact, uh, you, uh, yeah. Eddie told us about the, uh, the six-man match, and uh, that uh -oh. sounds mighty exciting. Uh, I, I can't wait. And I'm going to be back in just a few minutes. Is that is the uh, is that Sea Hag sensational Sherry here today? Well, the rumor is I don't know. I haven't seen her personally, but the rumor is she might be around today. Uh, well, if she's here, you probably know because you hear her barking somewhere in the back. But anyway, if she's here, I want to come out and say a few more words about her in a few minutes. Okay? Okay. We'll All right. Hey, so we want to do uh, show you just a few highlights of Sherry Martell, sensational oh, Sherry against Miss Texas and Lawler against Savage. Take a look right here. She might win in a Tyson's got something. I don't know. She Clovis Miss Texas or whatever in the world she had. Yeah, she had something. I can't see what it is. She's stuffing it back in her boots over there. She covers Miss Texas. One, two, three. And in 11 minutes and 13 seconds, we've got a new USWA ladies champion. Being on the middle of now. Savage is out. thing some kind of way and gets in the cage how in the world Sherry Martell just climbed the cage comes out and nails Lawler from behind so on 1548 referee Frank Morrell is going to call for the bell a sensational Sherry Martell kicks away on Jerry Lawler look at Martell boy interfering in the unified world Jumps over the steel cage, climbs the cage, jumps over the top, and she is going to work on the king. This lady, let me tell you, you can't have any respect for her at all. She is just absolutely obnoxious, let me tell you. After beating up on Lawler, Kick Savage, and he goes to work on the king. And Sherry Martell comes back in the ring now, does Martell, and buses Laura with a right fist. The Savage posts them and all. Martell had just two cents in it. Randy Savage. You forgot it's a steel cage up there, Sherry. She goes to climb it. It's gonna be a little too late, though. The king grabs the <laughs> Well, <laughs> the king went after yeah. Sherry Martell. I tell you, that one, it got to the point where it didn't have so much to do with a unified belt as it was a personal vendetta. And now Sherry Martell with Scotty Flamingo here and smiling and just very happy with the entire situation, I can tell. I'm real uh, happy with the whole situation. As a matter of fact, hey, Lance Russell, I told you about that tanning bed. How you doing, Dave Brown? I'm now, doing Miss, Look at this, people looking at Memphis. Tell me, tell me, is this not the most sexiest man that you have ever laid your eyes on? No, they're saying no. Well, that shows how much intelligence you have. Look at this lady. Something about to dream about at night. Lay that, lay that right there. And look at this lady. Something that you go to bed dreaming about every night. And I see. And let me show you something else. Oh, come on. Don't want to show them everything, Scotty. That's a lot. That's how much you know out there.
and how much Memphis knows. And I saw you out here a while ago with those guys, and I saw you just beat the heck out of them. You're talented, you're young, you're gorgeous, and you can be anything and everybody around you. Hear that, Dave Brown? Hear what she said? Tell us some more, Sherry. Tell us some more. That's right. Look at this. Look at that. He's got the biceps. He's got the hips. He's got the thighs, and he's got every move that it's going to take to make this man a world champion. Now, one other thing. Miss Texas, last week you got just a little bit of taste of what I'm going to do to you. You ought to be working at Taco Bell serving love and hot sauce for what I did to you. But no, you couldn't do it, could you? You couldn't do it. You had to come back and get a little bit more. It was bad enough. I had to strip that stupid whatever it is you wear around your scalp. It isn't bad enough that I had to humiliate you and rip your clothes off. Humiliated her. Humiliated her. <laughs> it's not bad enough that I had to come out here and scorn my hands with that stuff, whatever it is you put in your hair oh. that is a lack of confidence. It's disgusting that you had to put your hands in her greasy, nappy hair. I know. Makes me think about it already. I went home and took four showers. Ooh. Next thing, Miss Texas, I'm not finished with you. You want some more of me? Come on. You just come on. Come on anywhere, anytime. Because that was just a preliminary sample of what I intend to do to you. Now. Jerry the King Lawler, you had the audacity and the nerve to humiliate me. Well, let me tell you something. I've got a man right here. I have got a man right here that will kick your butt all over Memphis. And as soon as I get my hands on you, and as soon as Scotty's picking every part of your body, he's going to let me have what's left. He's going to let me have what's left. I'm going to rip your butt apart. That is that there's anything left when he gets finished. <laughs> That's right, Jerry the Burger King Lawler. If you put one hand on the pretty head of the sensational one, Sherry Martell, I am going to rip your head off, and I'm going to stick my fist in your, right down the hole, and I'm going to... Well, the king is back, and so is Miss Texas. Sherry Mortel, you nothing happened in Tramp. <laughs> now, you got real lucky last week. But I'll tell you what, you're going to find out that the people in USWA fight. And when I do get in the ring again, I'm going to kick your teeth down your throat. I think she can do it, too, you know? Oh, yeah. You know, I don't know about this uh, sensational Sherry. She claimed, uh, did Scotty Flamingo call her a lady? Did he refer to her as a lady? Huh? I believe he did. Let me tell you something about her, Scotty. She's rubbing her hands all over you. Well, I'll give you a little clue about sensational Sherry. She's had more men's hands on her than a doorknob, if you know what I mean, pal. I think... As a matter of fact, is she running for some sort of election? I don't know. I think she must be running for some sort of election because when I was up in the WWF, uh, WWF I heard him say that sensational Sherry's seat was up for grabs. So what does that mean, huh? <laughs> I'll tell you what it means. It means that just exactly like Miss Texas said, you, sensational Sherry, are a sleazy tramp. That's right. We're calling you a sleazy tramp. And if you had any guts, you would come out here, you and that wimp Scotty Flamingo, and do something about it. But you ain't got the guts to come out here today. But we don't have to worry about that because the match is already signed, sealed, and delivered, brother. Monday night, Mid-South Coliseum, big boy, boy toy Scotty Flamingo is going to have to drag that tramp, Sensational Sherry, out to the ring and you are going to be facing Miss Texas and the King of Wrestling, and we can't wait to get our hands on you, Sensational Sherry. Miss Texas, I want you to promise me one thing. You know, you said you're going to knock her teeth out. You know if you knock her teeth out, all you'll be doing is improving her looks. <laughs> but I want you to leave just a little bit of Sensational Sherry for me, because 
You see, I had the macho man just where I wanted him last week. And what happened? In comes Sensational Sherry. Well, now, I got a score to settle with you, Sherry. And Monday night at the Coliseum, just leave me a little bit. Because, you know, there are some men that say they don't want to put their hands on a woman. And I am one of those. I would never slap a lady. <laughs> but Sensational Sherry, you are no lady. And I promise you, just leave me a little bit. Because... I got a big, big surprise in store for you Monday night, Sherry. So just show up, because I almost hate to say it, but we got a date, right? <laughs> All, right. All right. Well, All right. the king and the... Boy. We were afraid of that parry. Take a look yeah. at this. Oh, reversal! Darren and Christopher! Standing in the middle of the ring. Hey, Jeff Jarrett. I told you I'd come down here and I did my job. Jeff Jarrett, I did what I said I'd do. Something else. He and Jared work together well in there against King and Doll. Looks to be a good tag team, and all of a sudden he jumps on Jeff there. What in the world, let me tell you. Brian Christopher, don't put nothing past this guy. He's jumping on Jeff Jared. Out of nowhere, Christopher says, hey, Jeff, I tell you job I told you I'd do. And all of a sudden, he jumps on Jeff Jarrett. Jarrett on his feet, and boy, they're fighting it out. Christopher goes for the power driver. Oh! And Jarrett flips him over. Goes after Christopher. What a wild turn of event from these two. Work together well with a good-looking tag team in there. Oh, boy, here comes King and Dahl, simply divine in there. After Jared and Christopher, we're going in. Well, let me tell you, this is some kind of crazy thing, let me tell you that. King and Dahl, simply divine, they show back up, and they jump on Jeff Jarrett. Christopher's back on his feet. Around, sees King and Dahl, and he helps them out. So it makes it three on one, simply divine. King and Dahl and Brian Christopher jump on Jeff Jeff. So I say referee Paul Neighbors disqualified Christopher and Jared. Christopher jumps on Jeff Jared. comes out and all jump on Jeff Jarrett. Hey, but here's the bird man. Oh, come beware. Oh, look at Coco. He's nailing the way on Christopher. Come on, guys. We're out here talking to Jeff. There is, you have no business out here. This is not your interview time. Before we get things going here, I just want to give you a fair warning. My partner might be, might be there, and he might not be. He might have his guitar, but I just want to let you know, he might be right behind that curtain. Let me tell you something, Jeff Jarrett. Let me give you a little bitty hint about tag team wrestling. Now, I know what you do. Me and you used to ride down the highways together, son. You don't sit at home in your big condo 
reading your USA Today, <laughs> drinking your Michelob Light, oh. and going through the one ads, finding your partner. Oh. Me and this man right here have been tag team wrestling for five long years. Oh, shut up. You shut up and listen. Five long years, Jeff Jarrett. Let me tell you something right now. I don't think you got a partner. I don't see Jerry Lawler out here. Where's Jerry Lawler? I saw him out here earlier. He's not out here with me. They don't want to be associated with a loser like you, Jerry. That's the bottom line. He might be right behind that curtain, yeah. Yeah, you think you're so big and bad, do all your... He might be behind that curtain. Yeah. Well, I tell you what. I don't believe you, and I don't even think your stupid hillbilly fans are dumb enough to believe you. We don't think you got a partner. As a matter of fact, we're going to call your bluff right now. Hey, come on. Oh, King is all dump on Jeff in there, Dave. Two against one as Steve Dahl takes a swing at Jeff. Rex King right behind him. Oh, oh look out. It's Billy Travis. Heading the top. I guess we know who the mystery partner is now, huh? Yeah! Mystery partner Billy Travis and his guitar. And now I wonder what <laughs> Steve Dahl and Rick King think about that situation. We'll give them a couple of minutes to think it over, and we'll be back. Maybe you, there you see him right there, over on the right side of the screen. Billy Travis, right there. Now Jeff Jarrett, handing the... Southern heavyweight title out of the ring. Oh, yeah, look at that. All of a sudden, Brian Christopher has left the area. Oh, Jeff ran him out of here. Now, here he comes back now. Boy, Christopher, he got up when uh, Jeff just looked at him, jumped out of the ring, and went after Christopher, and Christopher I held it out. Reverie calls for the bell. Here we go. Now, Christopher was out here a little bit earlier claiming that uh, this is going to be a title match. Uh, I'm not sure about that. I, I, I'm not sure if the title is on the line or not here. I, I don't believe it is. I have confirmation from the promoter that that was just a figment of Brian Christopher's imagination. He was just trying uh, maybe to pressure that into a title match, but it isn't. Title is not on the line. Jeff Jarrett, Southern heavyweight champion. And win, lose, or draw, he will be when this match is over. But I tell you what, he wants to win it. He wants to win it. Look at that. Yeah, sure. Oh, I want to look at Jarrett fight back. Oh, Christopher. And Christopher not only touching the rope, he's, he's holding on to him with arms and legs to make sure the referee knows to hold Jeff Jarrett back. Jeff. Coming in there after him. Wisely, though, Jeff didn't come in too quickly. Now, Christopher's complaining about something to the referee. Christopher and Jared tangle up. Jeff whips him into the rope. Christopher goes on the turn around. And Jared buses him. Boy, he clobbers Christopher. A little premature celebration on the part of Brian Christopher. He ducked under that first right hand, and then he turned around and smiling and celebrating a little bit, and pow, Jeff nailed him. Right in the smack here, he's got it, boy. Christopher back on his feet now, and uh, he's still in the corner. He's got his fist drawn back there. Got that right hand loaded, but he's standing in the corner with it. Tell the referee Kevin Christian to tell Jeff about the fist. You tell him about the fist, buddy. Yeah, Christopher had his fist doubled up. When he doubled his right fist, Jeff doubled up his. And then all of a sudden, Christopher got incensed that Jeff would have his fist doubled up. Look at that. Supposedly a break for Jeff and Christopher. Melling away on it. That goes in our trip. Jeff gets out of the corner. Thumbs away on Brian Christopher. Christopher out of the line there. Got to get himself back together, I think. Now. I said, Jeff Jarrett, what the work on Dave Brown, somebody please tell him a fist is illegal. Well, okay. Jeff, a fist is illegal. 
<laughs> Jeff Jarrett, you punch me one more time, and I'm gonna break your stinking neck. Now, fans, keep in mind, you've seen it. Who has thrown the most fists in this match so far? A, Jeff Jarrett, or B, Brian Christopher? Well, obviously, the answer is B, and here's another one right there. Yeah, not a hard multiple choice question at all. It's Christopher right there. Answers the question. Now in a way on Jeff Jarrett, slams him into the ring pole. And barbing away on Jeff, and he wants to complain about the fish. Can you imagine that? How about C, Brian Christopher? Oh, all of them. He's up on the top row. Comes down and dumps the right fish. Another one on Jeff. Now he's covered. One, two, and Jeff kicked out of two. Yeah, referee started to count at two. I thought Jeff might have been under the ropes there for a moment, but apparently not. The referee started the count, got to two before Jeff kicked out. Brian Christopher was insistent on getting there for the cover, hoping that he could hold Jeff down for the three count, but it wasn't to be. Oh, Christopher, right elbow, big forearm, takes Jeff down. Well, there's, a, there's another case of the ego maybe getting in the way. Brian Christopher took one and a half counts to celebrate. Yeah, look at, look at this, though. Jeff rolls him up, too. Only two. Chris Rover complaining to the referee, and Jeff just politely slid under him, rolled him up there, and had him for only two counts, though. Thought he could have had him there. I thought he might have, too. Brian Christopher trying to pick him up. Look Jeff, Jeff blocking him. Yeah, not an easy thing to do. Jeff, look at this. Jeff suplexes Brian Christopher. That's what Christopher was trying to do to him and couldn't do it. Yeah, Jeff says here's how to do it. He comes off the rope, misses. Ooh, there's a mistake by Jeff right yeah, there. Yeah, boy. And Jeff knew it in midair, but once you commit, once you're in the air, nothing he can do. He tried, he tried to uh, break his own fall and couldn't do it. Christopher with a cover. Two, and Jeff kicks out. Boy, what a well of a bow. Jeff, Jared, Brian, Christopher. USWA Championship Wrestling. This is the way it is, boy, let me tell you. Some of the hottest wrestling action in the USWA. Jeff flips over. Sunset flip. Can't get him down, though. And Christopher nails him. Boy, he hung on. Jeff tried to get enough balance to get Christopher off his feet and uh, roll him and get his shoulders down. Christopher covers. He only gets a two. Well, there's an example that both these wrestlers are in great shape. You can't take that away oh, from Brian indeed. Christopher. Uh, the strength in his legs, he was able to block Jeff's attempt at the sunset flip there. That was uh, just simply strength against strength. Both of them a couple of strong guys, and that time, Brian Christopher was able to save himself as a result of the training. Yeah, you just hate to see the attitude this Christopher has. And the fist that he's using right there on Jeff Jarrett. Yeah, big atomic yeah. knee drop. There's on. an answer by Jeff. He uses a fist himself. Takes Christopher into the turnbuckle. Comes off. Oh, big clothesline on Brian. Christopher. Look out behind. Watch it, Jeff. Here comes King and Dahl. Simply divine. Billy Travis jumps in to have Jeff out. They throw powder in Travis's face. And simply divine. Rex King and Steve Dahl and Brian Christopher all jump on Jeff and Billy. Billy Travis in there to try to help out. It's two against two. Well, no, I take that back. It's three against two because you got Brian Christopher over there jumping on Jeff Jarrett, too. Rex King drops down with the arm. Steve Dahl working on Billy Travis. They threw powder at Billy's eyes, so uh, it's not like Billy is at full strength. I don't know what kind of powder it was. Doesn't make much difference. Any kind of powder gets in your eyes for yeah. a few minutes. You're going to have problems with it. That's the case with Billy right now. Yeah, Reverend Kevin and Christian want him some help in there. Yeah, we want the same thing, Ref. Yeah, if you're listening, if there's, uh, if you're on the monitors in the uh, in the dressing room there, we could use some help out here to even this up. Boy, there's two against one on Jeff Jarrett and Billy Travis being worked on by Steve Dahl. You know what upsets me about the way Dahl and King interfered? We had one of the best matches going here oh, that we've yeah. had on TV in a long, long time with uh, a couple of guys, one the Southern Champion, one who has been and wants to be again the Southern Champion. Here comes some help. Here comes the King. Here comes Jeff Gaylord and Danny Davis. And now Steve Dahl, Rex King, and Brian Christopher out of the ring. They're celebrating. Yeah, they're, yeah, Brian, look at Brian Christopher. Well, let's take a break, fans. We'll be back here in just a moment. That one officially goes down as a disqualification against Christopher. They jump on King and Dahl. Well, King and Dahl interfered in Jeff's match against Brian Christopher. They're just returning the favor here. Jeff and Billy, look out. Here comes Christopher. Speaking of Christopher, he jumps Jeff Jarrett from behind. 
The match is over, fans, officially. Yeah. It's going to be a win for Simply Divine by disqualification. But boy, the action still continues. Out on the floor, it's Billy Travis, Steve Dahl, Jeff Gaylord against Rex King. Here comes the King. Yeah, he's right. got Brian Christopher. He knows Christopher. William Lawler go after Brian Christopher. He is down. Take Christopher in. Big double right fist from Lawler and Jared. Referee Devin Christian trying to get on. chair with the clippers and uh, everything is ready to go we have a southern heavyweight title match coming up right here today and king interesting stipulation jeff jarrett's title against brian christopher's hair did you all hear that i mean this this is going to shape up to probably be one of the biggest days in the history of tv wrestling right here that we have ever had for studio wrestling because brian christopher has been begging pleading for a title shot, claiming that he is always ignored, always overlooked, even though he's had I don't know how many. Now, he's finally got the title shot, but he had to put something at stake as valuable as the Southern Heavyweight title that Jeff's putting up. And what is he putting at stake? His own hair. And we want to bring in a gentleman from uh, a salon right here in Memphis, Tennessee, The Perfect Cut, which is over in Raleigh LaGrange, Michael O'Kelly. Michael, want to welcome you to the show. Michael O'Kelly could be doing the honors here today. You have the chair. You have the scissors, you have the clippers, you have it all. Now, I want to ask you one question. Over at that shop at the Perfect Cut, do you all have, like, if somebody comes in, they want a certain style of hair, do you guys have, like, pictures or books they can look at and choose the style they want? Yeah, we have several they can pick and choose from. Okay, well, that's good because I'll tell you what I did. And while I was waiting in the back there, I took myself a little uh, magic marker and an ink pen, and I sort of drew a picture of that idiot Brian Christopher, and I'll tell you what, I want you to look at this, and this is the style that we want Brian Christopher to have today. See that right there? That is what we'll, can, can you, can you get that for us, Michael, if he loses this match? Yeah, I think I can do that. I'll probably enjoy that real much. Soon. All right, that's great. So if Brian Christopher, if you're in the back, take a good look, pal. This is sort of like looking at a crystal ball in your future, because I'm going to put my money on Jeff Jarrett. I think he's going to remain the champion. I think we're going to see Brian Christopher have to sit his butt in this barber chair and get his head shaved right here on TV Today Live. Well, you may be right. You're talking about Brian hasn't been overlooked. He and Jeff, of course, of course have had matches in the past, and we kind of ran that through the computer, and just so you'll know, there's a better than 50-50 chance. 56% of the matches have been won 
by Jeff. So right. better than even chances, Brian will be sitting right there to get his hair cut here today. All right, are you ready? Yes, I'm ready. All right, good deal. I think, I think we're all ready. Southern heavyweight titles on the line. Nice to have you here. Jeff, hello there. How are you? Big, uh, big doings today oh, for you, huh? Real, real big day. You know, I've been sitting in the back thinking about this moment. And Brian Christopher, everybody knows that a couple of weeks back he turned on me. He's been a thorn in my side for over a year now. And since Brian's come along, he thinks he's the greatest thing since sliced bread. He's cocky. He thinks he can't do any wrong. He thinks he's the best wrestler. He thinks he's the best talker. He thinks he's the strongest, the biggest, the baddest. Well, Brian, what you're going after today is the Southern Heavyweight title. And, pal, I know that you don't even think about who's held this Southern Heavyweight title. Jackie Fargo was one of the greatest champions ever. Jimmy Valiant, the boogie-woogie man, he was one heck of a champion. And probably the best of all was Jerry Lawler, because he held, that's right. He held the title for over 10 years. And Brian, what I'm trying to do right now is sort of walk in their footsteps. I'm just trying to achieve the superstar status that they achieved by holding this belt. So Brian, after today, you're still gonna think you're great. You're still gonna think you're the biggest and baddest and still gonna be cocky, but you're also gonna be bald headed, Brian. And I can't wait to see you sit in that chair and get every head on your head shaved. Don't do enough, that's right. And Rex King and Steve Dahl, yeah, you think you're real big and bad, and you come in and you want to take on me and Billy Joe. Well, Billy Joe... Hold on, Jeff, hold on. You're just too nice to these boys. So let me tell you something, boy. When you talk about scum of the earth, when you talk about getting down in the gutter, when you talk about rats, you talk about Billy Joe Travis. Compared to me, you two punks are angels, boys. When you're in the gutter, you're just on the surface. I get way down in the dirt. For example, you bring a chair, oh, Billy Joe will bring a chair and a guitar punk. Well, this week, we got a wall tag team title match with me. I'm dead on team. Billy Joe and Jeff Jarrett's gonna be ready, and we're gonna show you how to get bad and how to get nasty punk. Dave, one last thing. Brian, listen up, pal. You got about 15 or 20 minutes before we step in the ring. And I'm, go I'm gonna go back, back here, find me in the corner and get to thinking because a uh, basketball coach that was, a, uh, he was one of my idols, Jim Valvano passed away recently. And he had a saying and it said, don't give up, don't ever give up. And that's what my motto is today in the ring, Brian. Hey David, one more thing. I'm gonna get rid of a little trash today. I got Whoopie D of PG-13. Boys, I am rated X. Ooh, floor. There's PG-13, totally disorganized. Timeout says J.C. Ice. Uh, what, uh, what are they? Oh, check it. Oh, yeah. Oh, Poor baby. Oh. Yeah, climb back in the ring there. <laughs> Billy's waiting for her, man, just standing there. <laughs> so, Wolfie D, from the hood, they say they are. PG-13, Billy Travis, wrestling in out of Houston, Texas. Hey, Billy, I'm hey, 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 wait, wait, sir, excuse oh. me, Corey, we, we, we got, what are you doing out here? We've got a match in progress, for heaven's sake. We got a, we got a match in progress, we know, listen, that Jeff Jarrett out here, in the, talking about he's going to the back, he's going to psych himself up. You know, Jeff Jarrett, all that's going to do is wear you out, son. And me and my buddy here, me and the sexy one, Rex T, we've been doing some thinking. We think it's not exactly fair. He's back there in the back psyching up. What that's do you right. think, baby? That's right, you know. Another thing we'd like to say, Dave Brown, you know, Billy Joe Travis is sitting out here telling everybody that he's the lowest of the lowest and he can get down and dirty. Well, Billy Joe Travis, you remind me of my partner of a tennis racket. You see, you swing both ways. And the bottom line is this. You have not seen Simply Divine when we get down and dirty. And the bottom line is this. Monday night, Memphis, Mid-South Coliseum, if you think, for one second, Billy Joe Travis and Jeff Jarrett, you're getting the belts that we got. You're wrong. You're 100% wrong. You know, Jeff Jarrett, you talk a pretty good fight. You got your a buddy pulls me right out of the gutter. Well, let me tell you about gutters, boy. We'll stop you into the gutter. We'll see how low you can get, Billy Travis. As a matter of fact, you know, we might just not wait around. We might see if we... Let's see what he's got. Let's see what he's got. Let me see if Jeff Jarrett's got the guts to come out here right now and see what's going on. Now, wait a minute, for Oh, you got to stay out of it. Yeah, yeah. We've got a match going on, and all of a sudden, King is off. 
succeeded in, in breaking his concentration about the championship match which is coming up and well at least we got it all separated here let's uh let's come back and uh, we brian christopher and the Birdman, coco beware just take a look at some highlights right here well you gotta watch this brian christopher whenever you're in there with him Christopher, he's got that chain again. Robert's Coco with it. Oh, boy, he nails the bird, man. Brian Christopher, slaying away with that chain, and referee Frank Morrell is going to call for the bell. 21 minutes and 30 seconds. Frank Morrell calls for the bell in 21.30. Oh! He throws Christopher to break it in there. He wasn't. Shoves Christopher out of the way. Coco's got the chain. Okay, Frank. Frank Morrell has declared disqualification now on Brian Christopher for hitting it. And look at that. Coco Wack gets the chain. Oh, Frank Morrell just took Christopher. Well, you saw it right there, Coco Beware going against Brian Christopher, and a mighty unhappy Brian Christopher, but Brian Christopher, uh, well, he's coming to that attitude, he's got that attitude once again, as he heads this way, that evil little smile on his face. Brian Christopher, we've already seen him unofficially a time or two today, but now here he is, and Brian, I guess you're aware of Coco B. Dave Brown, I want to ask you something. I want to know what is that barber chair doing here? And why are them clippers sitting in it, along with them scissors and the comb, huh, Dave Brown? Well, I think you're, you're aware generally why they're here. They're here because your hair is at stake, Southern title is at stake for Jeff, and if you lose, they're going to put you in that chair right there and shave your head right here on television today. Well, Dave Brown, before we go any further, I want to know who is the referee here today. Is it Frank Morrell? That's all I want to know. No, it's Kevin. Okay. Well, let me tell you what. Frank Morrell, you ball-headed idiot. You have done touch me for the last time. Every time I got a match, you're always pushing on me. You're always touching all over me. Well, I'm going to tell you what. Next time you ever lay a hand on me, I'm going to knock your ball head itself all the way up into the top row of general mission. You understand me? Mark my words. And another thing, Dave, let me tell you what. You stand there and you hold it right there. Don't move again, okay? Now, everybody comes out here and they start running their mouth. Brian Christopher, he thinks he's big. Brian Christopher thinks he's bad. He thinks he's the greatest thing on earth. Well, let me tell you something. Brian Christopher knows 
He's big, bad, and he knows that he is the greatest thing on earth. Everybody wants to come out here and they say, Jackie Fargo, he was a legend. He was one of the greatest Southern title holders of all time. You know, I always wonder, why is it when I step in the ring, whoever I'm against, they announce her. Let's just say it's Jeff Jett. In this corner, Jeff Jett. Oh, yay, yeah. And in the other corner, Brian Christopher. You see what I'm saying, Dave? That's the way it's been all throughout time. These morons have been trained that Jackie Fargo They've been trained that handsome Jimmy Bayon, you're idiots. You think that Coco Ware and Jerry Lawler, you think that you're supposed to clap for them whenever you hear their name. Well, I'm going to tell you what. I, I am a star. I'm not a second-rate wrestler like Jackie Fargo, handsome Jimmy Bayon. I am the greatest wrestler that has ever drawn a breath. You understand me? So from now on, when you announce my name, you people should rise up and clap for me. I don't understand why these people will not clap for me. It's always Jeff Jett, Coco Ware, Jerry Lawler, and all these other stupid. Now you see who the fans appreciate right there. Didn't I tell you to shut your mouth? Huh? Well, let me tell you. Coco beware. I'm warning you, this is my interview time, and nobody, and I mean nobody, interrupts me. You hear me? Hey, do you hear me? I said nobody comes out of here. That was the best compliment that you ever had, that you ever said, punk. You want to say Jackie Fargo was a legend? Jimmy Valiant was a legend? Jerry Lawler is a legend? Well, baby, hey, you can rank me as a legend, too. You can rank Jeff Jarrett as a legend. But you think those people that you're fooling those people, they're not crazy, baby. They're, they're not wrong. crazy. They're that's right. you are You know what? I'm telling you, that's the reason why they fool you. That's the reason why they fool you, because you're nothing but a punk. And I'm going to tell you one thing. No, you can ask me something. You ain't telling me nothing. Come on, guys. Come on now. You may not get the chance to wrestle Jeff Jarrett today, because I'm guaranteeing you, I will kick your booty all over this dirt house. What you say yourself is a superstar. You ain't nothing, punk. You ain't nothing, because you ain't never paid no dues. You understand that? You ain't never paid nothing. That's all I got to say. And you put that in your little peace pipe, and you smoke it, you understand me? Because I'll knock you the next week. Okay. You make me so mad, you know what I can do? I can just throw up in your mouth. Okay. Go on now. Go on, Coco. You've read your mouth long enough. Oh, look out, look out. Oh, boy. Yeah, Christopher. Oh, the book for high. He's oh. the book man. He's the book for high. Oh, look out. Hey. Hey. Coco's after him. He hasn't got him yet. Ryan Christopher through the ring. Coco right behind him. Now one's on one side, one's on the other. Coco has to pick up on him, though. He's, uh, he's got him separated from the escape route, I think, right about now. Yeah. Boy, I wish I could catch him for him, too. Coco's saying, what's the matter? He's so big and tough. How come you're running? Here's oh, Eddie Marlin trying to set it, settle it all down here. He's after Coco. What he's going to yeah. do is say, hey, this is not the time or place for it. I understand you're, you're upset, Coco, but... Uh, no. Here's a Hall of Famer if I ever saw one right here. The King Jerry Lawler. Thank you, Dave. Um, I understand you have a little bit of footage that you're going to show, and I just sort of wanted to come out here for a second and make sure I had a good front row seat too because everybody remembers, you know, we've had the past couple of weeks we've been paid a visit from the World Wrestling Federation by Sensational Sherry. And she came, you know, she came down here last week. 
I, I had to check the calendar because I couldn't tell if that was uh, her face or if it was Halloween. Because I want to tell you something. She is ugly enough to make a freight train take a dirt road. But all that, uh, all that aside, she proved to be pretty tough. She climbed that steel cage in that match with uh, Macho Man. I mean, you know, like she'd been eating bananas all her life or something like that. She climbed right in there and uh, she interfered and she made me a little hot. Well, last week I got my chance to get back at Sensational Sherry. What? And Go ahead. She's, she's upset, too. She's mighty upset. As a matter of fact, well, I, I know she is, but I think, we, do we have the highlights of the match to see why she's upset? Yeah, I was going to say, if we show you that right here, maybe everyone will understand oh, why she's good. upset. That's good. And then we'll get a comment from you. Take a look at this. Oh, boy. 1909. Law and Miss Texas, they get the win. But Flamingo and Martel. Jump on a king and Miss Texas. Oh, there Flamingo went out to Lola. Martel was trying to pause off Miss Texas. The king's got Jared Martel. Oh, oh, oh. oh my God. He falls on Jerry Martel. There goes Martel. And there goes the king and Miss Texas. The winners of the ball. We've been asked to go into Sherry Martell's dressing room and understand she's got some words, uh, Sherry. Oh, oh, look at us! Look at us, Jerry the King Lawler! Look what you did to her! Are you proud of yourself? Attacking a lady like this? And you call yourself a man? Oh, you okay, baby? Oh, honey, what about her interfering in the battle out there, Scotty? She Wait. interfered as well. <coughs> Wait, see, uh, Jerry Lawler, uh, <coughs> look what you've done to me! What is it? How does it feel to pound her of a woman? I, you okay, Scotty, baby? You okay? Jerry Lawler, I know people all over the wrestling world. No matter what it takes, no matter who I have to call, somebody's going to make you pay. Somebody's going to come here, and they're going to break your stinking neck, and they're going to do to you what you did to me tonight. <laughs> get, get out of here, Macklin! Get out of here! Well, now, King, I know you consider that uh, may, maybe an idle threat. You've heard a lot of them, but it looks like maybe she has uh, delivered on this one. Take a look at who is coming in here. Papa Shungo. Here is Papa Shungo! Shango almost broke 
Papa Shango. He's about 6'6". He's intense. I know I don't have to tell you about him. You're aware of it. Well, <laughs> you know, after standing there watching that little piece of video... Now, wait. Flamingo. You're a woman beater. You saw that, James Brown. Everybody saw it. You're a woman beater, King. You took a poor defenseless woman and you piled over. What kind of man are you? You know what? You're a depraved degenerate. You should be in a cell with Mike Tyson somewhere because you are nothing but a scumbag. Pile driving a woman like that. You heard her. And you're going to pay for it, King. You're going to pay. Papa Shango's coming. And I'll tell you what, there ain't a guy in the WWF that doesn't want a piece of you for what you did to Sean Marco. You're going to get it, King. You're going to get it. Got it, Flamingo. Well, I guess at least he's out of here. You know, he says there's not a guy in the WWF that doesn't want a piece of me. Well, let me tell you something. Let me tell you what I think about each and every guy in the WWF. I think they all stink. You understand that? That goes for you too, Scotty Flamingo. Now, Sherry Martell, you put yourself in a man's place, and that's why you got exactly what you had coming. Is that what you got? What you had coming? Now, you want to go back up there? and you want to send down some mercenaries to try to do your dirty work. Well, Papa Shango, yeah, you're six foot six, is that right? Weighs nearly 300 pounds. And as I saw there at the end of that video, you've even got uh, some kind of a skull with some fire shooting out of it. Well, let me tell you something, Papa Shango. You're looking at the man right here that knows a little bit about fire, is that right? So I'm going to tell you something. You come on down. Because you're not in the World Wrestling Federation. You're in my backyard. You come on down and see the king. And I'm going to make you a promise, Papa Shango. The only flaming skull that is going to be in that ring this week is going to be the skull that's painted on your face. And it's going to be flaming courtesy of the king. So come see me, Pat. There's a word from the king. Jeff Jarrett climbing up into the ring. The challenger for the Southern Heavyweight title is already there, Brian Christopher. Jeff has that Southern title. He is intent on keeping it here today, but it is, in fact, on the line. Jeff Jarrett defending a very difficult title to hold on to, the USWA Southern Heavyweight title. It has been one of the most important belts in the history of wrestling. Over here, right in front of the desk, there is a barber chair, and barber Michael O'Kelly is standing by because Jeff's putting up the belt. Brian Christopher had to bring something to the table, and he had to agree to put up his hair. And not only put up his hair for a styled haircut, it's going to be a shave. It is going to be shave ball if he loses this match to Jeff Jarrett here today. Well, you just win the match, and then you won't get your head shaved, but if you do lose the match, We'll be looking for you right over here. The Clippers, the Clippers have been plugged into the power, and Michael is standing by to shave the head of Brian Christopher if Jeff Jarrett is successful in his title defense here today. Christopher yelling at the crowd, complaining to the referee about this and that. As always, boy, I tell you what, from this guy, boy. you better pay attention to the champion, and we are underway. The USWA Southern Heavyweight title's at stake right now. Yes, sir, indeed. Sanctioned by the USWA, and this should be a good one, Jared and Christopher. Title versus hair. We got it for you right here on TV today. We've got plenty of time. We have a special agreement on time limit for this championship match, and I believe we're gonna have uh, just enough time just to let it go, but if time should run out, without a decision, we'll continue with tape rolling and let you know next week what happened. Here we go, Christopher. There is a knee lift to Jeff with Jeff in. There, at least over. Contact flip too. Thought it could have been a quick one there. Rolls it back up again there now to Jeff. Oh, it's cool again. Christopher kicks out of it. Jeff rolls him up again. Shoulders down and he can only get two. Jeff Jarrett not wasting any time going for the victory here. He doesn't want to mess around with Brian Christopher. I think that's good strategy yeah. because the longer Brian Christopher stays in there, I think perhaps the better his chances of taking the title back from Jeff Jarrett. Christopher, of course, a former holder of the belt. 
Jeff Jarrett wants to just take care of business. Vance Baldy, the Christopher. <laughs> Maybe his new name after this. <laughs> Christopher. Uh oh, he oh, goes over and gets. He took that sign away from the fan, uh, the king. Uh, the yeah, he took it away from one of the fans sitting over there. Artist rendition of the way Brian would look after he had his head shaved, and Brian didn't like that at all. He just went into the audience, took it away from the guy who had it, and tore it up. Yeah, he's taking it away from one of the great fans here. Christopher standing in the corner. Jeff Jarrett, that goes up with him. Jarrett! Twisting the left arm of Christopher. Tightens up on him again. Jeff Jarrett wrestles out of Hendersonville, Tennessee. Christopher from Memphis, Tennessee. Hair pulling by Brian. Christopher yanks Jeff back to the rope. Knee to the midsection. Whoops him in the ropes. Jeff mm -hmm. goes under. Comes back under again. And a flying press. He's got him down. Covers him. One, two. And Christopher gets out of it. Look for under. a moment as though Jeff yeah. might have him for the three count, but it was not to be. Thought it looked like he could have got him and made a stick in there, but Christopher soon got away, squeezed out of the cover. Got from under the two count and was able to kick out before three. Christopher complaining he pulled my hair, pulled my hair. Yeah, only hair pulling I've seen has been the other way around. He's pulled yeah. Jeff's hair a couple of times. You know, we complain about him, his tactics, his attitude, all that sort of thing, but we can't take it away from him. Both these guys right here are tough wrestlers, both championship caliber wrestlers. Either of them can hold the Southern heavyweight title when this day is done. Oh, indeed. You just hate to see Christopher use the kind of tactics he used. Oh, goodness, he snapped that arm. He can yeah. injure that arm like that. But even snap a bone, shoulder is in danger. Oh. Oh, oh, he's going to work on it now. Yeah, he slams it right in the top turnbuckle, this Christopher. Try to create a weakness and then take advantage of it. Yeah, smart move from him, though. You got to get him that much. Over holding on to Jared, holding on to that left arm. Slams down on his shoulder again. That doubled up fist. Oh, this was not letting up at all in this Southern Heavyweight title bout. Pikes up on Jeff Jarrett. Christopher drops down on it again. Jeff gets over in the turnbuckle. Should be a break for him over there. Christopher wraps his arm around that top rope is what he's doing. And he's fighting it. Boy, he's hurting it too. Jeff yeah. yelling at the referee. Biden on his arm is what he was doing. Reversal here. Ah, Jeff went in, but he caught that left shoulder. Boy. Jeff just let momentum carry him in there. He drove that left shoulder, and, and it's one of those things that as soon as you do it, you know you've made a mistake. That shoulder tender anyway, and Jeff drove in there and didn't do it any good. You know, psychologically, this can work on Jeff in addition to physically. You start thinking about the shoulder, trying to protect the shoulder, and you don't react naturally the way you would normally in a match. Yeah. Christopher trying to exploit that to the point. Yeah, right he's now. not letting up on it at all. He wraps his leg over on top of his shoulder, on top of that top rope over there. Takes Jeff Jarrett now and throws him right out of the ring. Yeah, threw the rope down into hey. the ring. Yeah, but look at that. We've got come to the king. Jerry Lawler, you can see him there. <laughs> he's he's got not. several copies of, <laughs> of Baldy Bryan. <laughs> oh, meanwhile, that was just nailed by Brian Christopher down here on the floor. Uh, yeah, there's the key handing him out there. Look out, oh. look out. Over to the ring post, and Jeff's left shoulder rammed into the ring post by Brian Christopher. His idea is socializing with the fans is what he's doing, Brian. That's how close his literature it looks like. I don't yeah, see him interfering in the match at all. You better take care of business in there. Well, like the king may have found himself a copy machine somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> and got him a few copies. Hands him out to the fans, and he's cheered for Jeff Jarrett. Oh, everybody's got their ball and Brian signs up. And uh, <laughs> waiting to see the outcome of this section. U.S. W.A. Southern heavyweight side about Jeff Go, Jeff, go. And I tell you what, Jeff needs that at this moment. He needs to know the fans are behind him as Christopher has succeeded in creating a weakness in the left shoulder. Now, what is this? Scotty Flamingo out here. 
Yeah. He's cheering on Brian Christopher. Lawler across the way cheering for Jeff Jarrett. Guys getting involved here. They have their favorites too into who represents the USWA as the Southern Champion. Yeah, indeed. Lawler, of course, it was considered Jerry Lawler's belt for many, many, many years. Boy, he held it. If, if he lost it, it wasn't long till he figured out a way to win it back. <laughs> oh, look at that! Christopher won, but he catches the boot from Jerry. And look at that. Oh, now I got King Simply and Dahl defined, out here, yeah. too. Rick King and Steve Dahl, they're out here with Flamingo. And Jeff Jarrett continues, cuts off the rope and misses. Oh boy, thought he could have had Chris for off the middle rope. You know, I understand the enthusiasm uh, for, for the fans and the guys, but I don't know, I'm too thrilled to see everybody around the ring here, especially Simply Divine and Scotty Flamingo. Ah, yeah, look at that. Oh. oh boy, oh, oh that's two. close. Only a two count, but I thought he had him. The referee, he's assured us, no, it was just a two count. Yeah, the King went over and got a little cheer and help over there, too, to cheer lead with him. He went and got the outside and Bill and Steve Marino. And the fans were high jump there as the Southern Heavyweight Champion. Well, but he's got his hands full today with Brian Christopher. And here comes even more cheers for the side of Christopher. Look at that! Comes up for all time! close man he almost had it but not quite christopher able to break out of it just before the three count hit the mat yeah jared's laid out in the middle of the ring that's christopher on the top bro and he knocks the legs out on it he covers it too what oh gets out of it bg 13 jc ice and so would be deep they're out cheering for brian christopher Reversal after reversal, it's back and forth. And man, look at these guys around the ring. I don't think I've seen excitement about a match from other wrestlers like this since, since that night when Jerry Lawler won the AWA title at the Memphis Mid-South Coliseum a few years ago. Everybody was into that match, and this match is starting to remind me of it, the atmosphere. And the intensity, boy, you talk about intensity. Southern heavyweight title hanging in the ballot. Christopher and Jeff. Boy, Brian Christopher, big shoulder, and he nails Jeff Jarrett there with the right hand. No, That's another right one in there. Christopher. Doubled up fist, third time he's hit him with a fist. Hey, Jeff Jarrett whips him into the turnbuckles over on the other side. Goes in off the dab. He's got him rolled up here now, two. Foot on the rope. Foot on the rope. Yeah, yeah. He, he would have had him if he'd been out in the middle of the ring there. I don't think Christopher could have broken it, but he had a foot on the rope, and that stopped the count. By God, he thought he could have had him there, but he got his foot on the rope. He's got Christopher's boot. Swings him around, and coming knee drops him on and pull back. Both of them hit the mat. Shoulders coming off of the uh, rope by Christopher, and both of them are down. Everybody around the ring is saying, come on, come on, cover him, cover him. If either wrestler can get a cover, he's got a shot at it. Christopher covers. One, two, there he's only got a two count. Only a two, and Jeff Jarrett brings up that right shoulder. Jeff got out, and he kicked up just in time on the two count. Christopher whoops him in. Look at Jarrett going, oh! Both of them hit each other with right hands, and both of them again hit the man. Man, oh man, you talk about a great bout between Jeff Jarrett and Brian Christopher. Expected none less at all between these two, but it's been a great single bout here on USWA Championship Wrestling. Christopher setting Jeff up, can't get him though. Jarrett hangs on, he's got Christopher up. Two flexes in now. Takes him down with a big suplex. Reversal here, he wants Jeff into the rope. What a move by Jeff Jarrett. Yeah, he came over the top of his boot. Got Christopher covered. Again, that's a 
just a two count. Oh, Brian Christopher almost out of it. Jeff was that close to successfully defending the Southern Heavyweight title, which is on the line, and putting Brian Christopher over here for a head shaving. Jeff Jarrett climbing the rope in the corner. Brian Christopher on his hands and knees, up on his feet. He turns, and Jeff presses him down to the mat. But a roll-up by Brian Christopher. He got a two-count. Momentum kept Jeff rolling. My yeah. goodness, what a match. <laughs> Flamingo and King and Doll and PG-13. They're all out here complaining to referee Kevin Christie. It was three, it was three, it was three. It was only two. Christopher, he's slobbering away on Jeff Jarrett now. Now Jeff again with another right hand. Jarrett still on his feet, though. Christopher slugging away. Oh, reversely, he whipped Jeff in. And he DDT's in. Big DDT from Jeff there. What a move. Oh, boy. Christopher staggering, and Jeff nails him with a right hand. Man, we're going to need to think about a break, but I'm not going to break away from this. Let's stay with it right here. Talk about oh, great bounce. Boy. Great action. Man, is this one. Hot in the foul. corner. Southern heavyweight title. Oh, Christopher dumped Jared right on his feet. Gets Jeff down. These guys have been battling since it started just like this. Going toe-to-toe -to -toe against each other. Christopher on his feet with a right fist as Jeff stands up. He's still standing as Christopher continues to hit him. Yeah. He returns fire. Jeff fights back now. Blocks again a right hand from Christopher. Comes off the rope. Buses Christopher with a right hand. Sends him down. Jeff Jarrett comes off. Oh, look at Steve Dahl. Oh, I don't know if they got a camera shot of it or not. What he got it. Oh, boy. Steve Dahl out here. Tripped up Jeff Jarrett. Jeff Bell face first in the match, and Christopher pins him up one, two, three, and interferes from Steve Dahl. I know they look good when they were out here. Steve Dahl tripped up Jeff Jarrett, and now Brian Christopher being treated as a hero over here after getting the three count, and the referee Kevin Christian picks up the Southern title, hands it to Brian Christopher. The referee didn't see what happened. No, he didn't he see it. He just saw Jeff's shoulders on the mat. He counted one, two, three. And Brian Christopher has been awarded the Southern Heavyweight title. Jeff Jarrett got tripped up from outside. Interference from one of Simply Divine's members, Steve Dahl. And now they're trying to explain exactly what happened. Referee Kevin Christian, he's over listening to everybody. He's trying to figure out what in the world happened. Lawler says, listen to the crowd. The crowd will tell you what happened. Yeah, Lawler's trying to tell him. And Steve oh. Dahl, oh, look out. Oh, he's oh, got a big goodness. ball now. Everybody's in there, and they're all going at each other. Coco Ware has got Christopher, if he can catch up with him. Christopher drops that southern title, and boy, he runs freely around the ring. He runs in the crowd back there. Brian Christopher is over in the audience somewhere. Hey! Comes out of the back curtain stage. Yeah, Christopher picked up the belt on the way, and he's headed out of here. Meanwhile, Coco Ware bumps into Wolfie D who gets nailed. We've still got the free-for-all going. Christopher is left. He grabbed the Southern title, and he is gone. He's out of here. He is the new Southern champion, at least pending a review of everything. Yeah, the referee's to... ruling is going to have to stand. That's the way it is. The referee didn't see what happened. Yeah, he just saw the shoulders down. Up. Yeah, that's all he saw was the shoulders down. Oh. We'll be back with four from the USWA. Like that, King, is just ridiculous, huh? Well, it, I mean, it is ridiculous. When, when, when you get all of those guys around the ring, you know, I, I, I feel like partially taking some of the blame. Maybe I shouldn't have come out here to begin with because then all the rest of these jerks come out there. When you get that many guys around the ring, something's going to happen. But, I mean, that is not right. Jeff had the guy beat 15 times. And then to have somebody, you know, if, if, if Brian Christopher can beat Jeff, 
And I think Jeff would be the first one to say, hey, I'll stand up and I'll admit defeat and I'll give him the belt. But Brian Christopher did not beat Jeff Jarrett. It was those jerks, Rex King and Steve Dahl all around the ring. They're, they're the ones that's interfered in the match. Brian Christopher, I don't know how you're going to stand there and call yourself a champion because in my book, and I guarantee in everybody's book that's watching this show and everybody out here, you are no champion. Do you understand that, punk? All right. Uh, Oh, uh, man, I'm just... Uh, yeah, I, I, I'm with you. And, and the fans, too, everybody's still upset about it all through the commercial break. Folks were standing and all sorts of things. But there are a lot of other things going on. We're going to check out a town action uh, coming up here in just a minute, and I know you have some things going on, too. Well, exactly right. I'm just... Uh... Tag team champion just climbing into the ring right now. Simply Divine, Steve Dahl, and Rex King. They have, they have already made their appearance here today before in a most unwelcome way as they interfered in a championship match. This is a non-title match, even though they hold the World Tag Titles. They will not be defending them here today, a non-title match, but as far as the Young Stallions go, the Marinos would certainly like to get a victory, and that would put them right in line for an official challenge to the tag titles. Yeah, you mentioned, Dave, about uh, the Simply Divine King and Dahl being unwelcome in the bouts. I think these two guys may have been unwelcome as far as a lot of fans are concerned, even before they got here. Well, you're right about Boy, that. These guys are something else. They are indeed. The attitude that they have exhibited since they returned to the USWA has been less than desirable. Oh. Although I must say that they're, they're wrestling, uh, they have certainly, they wasted no time in winning the tag team titles, and they're holding on to them pretty well. Beated the Moon Dogs for the titles, and they've held on to them since uh, King and Dahl have. Steve and Bill Marino, what a big knee left. Oh. Nice teamwork there. Steve Dahl, yeah, good move. Hey, Bill rolls him up in a small package. Only one, though, can make it stick. Yeah, Steve it's tough Dahl. to get a guy like Steve Dahl to, to uh, get a pin on him that quickly. Uh, oh, my goodness, there's a mistake by Bill. Boy, Steve Dahl was standing right flat on his feet and waited for Marino to come off the ropes. He went for the press. All of a sudden, Dahl just politely ducked and got out of the way of that. That's one of those gambles, but once you're committed to midair, you you got nowhere to go but hit the mat if he moves out of the way, and that's what Dahl did. Oh, boy, look at that. Rex King comes off the top rope, leaps over Dahl, and gets Bill Marino down. Oh, reverse neck breaker. From Rex King. Goes over and nails Steve Marino while Bill's in the ring. I think we could say Rex King is not very impressed with the young stallion so far. They're, they're not, they're certainly not lightweight wrestlers. Let me tell you, Mr. King, you better, you better not overlook them. Indeed. Rex King and Steve Dahl. Simply divine. The young stallions, Bill and Steve Marino in the USWA. Got Bill out. Oh! Steve Dahl comes down and catches a big boot from Bill Marino. Steve Dahl thought it was over with. But it wasn't. Down Steve Marino of the Young Stallions. Oh, look out. Oh, goodness. Here's PG-13 just jumping in the ring, interfering. It's four against two, the Young Stallions. Being hammered by PG-13 and Simply Divine. Here comes Jeff Jarrett to kind yeah, of even things out. He's got a score to settle with Steve Dahl, but Steve Dahl immediately gets out of the ring when he sees Jeff, yeah, and he he's gone. Out. There they go. <laughs> My goodness gracious, what an ending as we had a match, the interference. Yeah, Jeff, uh, Jeff's got a comment here. Yeah, Jeff. One second. Brian Christopher, it's not my style to come out here and moan and cry. And I'm not going to do that. I just want to serve notice to you. If it's the last thing I do, I'm going to pay you back and I'm going to get that Southern title because you don't know what it means to me. And Rex King and Steve Dahl, I used to just want your belts, boys, but now I want your hides and I'm going to get them and that's a promise. Jeff Jarrett, of course, by the King, Jerry Lawler, today is in the hands of someone else. I want to show you why right here. Here are the highlights of the match between Lawler and Papa Shango.
Shango. Couple of big right hands on Lawler. Whips him into the turnbuckle to drop a Shango. Goes in out to the key and misses. Lawler comes out. He's never the way out, Papa Shango. Papa Shango slams Lawler down, comes off the ropes and misses with a big elbow. He gets on his feet. And boy, he goes to work on Papa Shango. Tangles up with Jerry. Oh, he nailed Lawler right in the midsection. Goes to work on the king, takes him over, comes Papa Shango with whatever in the world is that stuff he carries. He swings it up to Lawler with it. Sum it away on Lawler, whips him into the wall. Oh, boy. Papa Shango set it all up. Big suplex on the king. John go whips Lawler in, picks him up, and just drops him down hard. Lawler out in the middle of the ring. And here comes Papa John go and he misses. Lawler gets out of the way. Key on his feet now. Oh boy! Look out, Papa John go. The stop of Lawler comes down. Now they're away on Papa Shango. Sends the big man stagger into Lawler. Whips him in hard to the rolls. Oh, big backdrop from Lawler. Takes him down. Flamingo gets up on the apron. Lawler busts Flamingo a couple of times. Drop kick from the king. Scotty Flamingo still trying to get in the ring. Frank Morrell trying to hold him back. But watch out, Papa Shango's on his feet, Jerry. Lawler and Morrell trying to keep Flamingo out. There he is, Papa Shango, the new unified world champion, and he is going to be right here later on today. So stand by for that. Coming this way right now, the master of terror, I see. Want to get a word? Brian Christopher has had a few run-ins with Frank Morrell. Take a look at what I'm talking about here. Stops 
Christopher from the chain he had in there. Hey, look at Christopher. One, two. Oh, boy. Oh, Siren and the Birdman clobbers in one right hand. The Birdman, Coco Beware. Going to work on Brian Christopher. Takes Christopher into the turnbuckle. Oh! Goes in and misses. Oh, boy. Could be a mistake for Coco as Christopher got out of the way. Was standing in the turnbuckle. Oh, takes Coco right onto the concrete floor over here. Right by the timer's table goes Coco there. He's out on the floor. Christopher climbing the ropes up on the top one. Coco's on his feet. And he slams down on Coco there. Coco there down. He's covering him. Two, Coco up at two. Well, he catches Coco right on the side of his face there and gets him down. Covers Coco where? Two. Coco gets his left shoulder up at two. Christopher humiliating Coco where? Birdman and a couple of big lights from Christopher. Hey, well, look at Coco Ware. Fighting his way back. Takes Christopher into the turnbuckle. Big forearm that takes him now. The Birdman, Coco Beware, and Frank Morrell both out in there. Christopher. and notice that he almost did it on purpose in there. Slams Coco right in the referee's Frank Morrell. That's Christopher on the top rope. He's going to come down on Coco. Oh, no! He comes down on Frank Morrell! What in the world? Boy, oh, this fine Christopher comes down. Now he's got to drop the leg on Coco half of the pin. Drops it right down in the chest of referee Frank Morrell. Pulls out a chain and nails the bird, man. Coco's out. He goes over and grabs up Frank Morrell. Covers Coco. Frank got one, two. Hey, there comes referee Paul Neighbors. Paul comes out and he's telling him. Yeah, Paul telling him what happened. He's telling him you out and Christopher. with it. And Frank Morrell raises the hand of the Birdman and Christopher Clover's Paul Neighbors. Oh, boy. <laughs> Frank goes over and grabs Christopher, plugs him into Coco, and Frank Morrell with a right hand of his own. And the Birdman, Coco Beware, gets his hand I think Brian Christopher maybe has found he can't shove Frank Morrell around quite as easily as he uh, would like. Here he comes right here. He has the southern belt around his waist. Here's Brian Christopher. Dave Brown, we need to get every mouth over here shut. We need to have every mouth shut for just a few minutes. And keep yours shut also. Now, Dave... I know that I've come out here before, and I know I've told you some things maybe you didn't believe, some things that might have been far-fetched. Well, Dave, I got something to tell you today that is going to shock you, because it shocked me. Now, everybody just saw Coco Ware. Me and Coco Ware had a match, and before the match, I told Frank Morrell, I warned you not to lay your hands on me. And I guess you're so old and hard of hearing, you didn't understand me because he laid his hands on me. And Frank Morrell, I'm sick of it. You hear me? I am sick of it. So this week, I challenged Coco Ware and Frank Morrell to a match. And you know what? You know what, Dave Brown? They accepted. <laughs> 
Coco Ware and the old decrepit toot Frank Morrell, the referee, accepted my challenge. So then, Dave, what I had to do was I had to go out, listen to me, I had to go out and find myself a tag team partner for this match. And I wanted to find somebody just about the same age as old Frank Morrell. And I thought the only place to find somebody his age would be the cemetery. But you know what? I found somebody. Frank Morrell, you think you're a legend. You know everybody's having these reunion of legends here. All these reunions of legends. Well, the four horsemen ain't got nothing on Brian Christopher. Because I have the legend of all legends. The man that has beat them all. And he's here today. I'm about to bring him out here. The man that's going to do you in, Frank Morrell. Here he is. Now, I want everybody to treat him with proper respect. You understand me? The Spaceman, Frank Hickey. Oh, yeah. Brian, Spaceman Frank Hickey is indeed a legend. He is a legend, but... <laughs> you see this, Frank Morrell? This is the man that is going to hurt you, Frank Morrell. This is the man that is going to break every old decrepit bone in your body. Come on, Frank. Come on over here. And Dave, I'm warning you, you better treat him with respect because this man is mean. This man is nasty. This man is a legend. Frank Hickey, I know. Tell him, tell him, Frank, what you're going to do. I'm going to grind him up like I'm going to do Fizz. I did it to Fizz one time in St. Louis, and I can do it again. And Frank Morrell, look out, because I'm coming after you. I might be a little old, but I got a lot of experience. Now, I remember, excuse me, go ahead. Well, I, I was just going to say you're, you're a legend. There's no doubt about it. And, and I know you wrestled Lou Fez. You've wrestled all the great ones. You beat them. But uh, I don't know, prime and all of that. Well, I knew Frank Morrell when he was... I used to carry his, his, his bag to the ring from the parking lot, putting near five miles away. It's like but, but, but what he's forgetting to tell you is that was in 1910, wasn't it? That is how old That's, Frank no, Morrell no, is. No, 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 no. That, that, that was in 1910 that this man used to carry Frank Morrell's bag to the, to the Coliseum. Frank, Frank Morrell's not that. 1910, ladies and gentlemen. And when, hey, when I went to Frank Hickey, turn around so everybody can see it. Let's turn around. Let's turn around here. Okay. Get a wide shot. I want a wide shot of this man. Okay. When I went to this man and I said, hey, will you do me a favor? I got somebody that I need to be taken care of. Frank Morrell. You know what he said? You know what he said? Tell him what you said. Frank Morrell used to work at the glue factory. That's all I knew him of. He said, isn't Frank Morrell dead? Isn't he dead? I thought he was dead by now. <laughs> what did he say? Was he dead? Was he dead? No, no, no. I, 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 I'm not sure, but what, what you got Frank Morrell confused with somebody else. No, Frank Morrell. This is great, Dave. Brian, this is, this is, great. This is ridiculous. As well. I have a legend out here, and we are going to take care of you, Frank Morrell. You done messed with the wrong man, and now you got to mess with him. This is a legend right here. He's not a wannabe. He's not old. This man is in shape. This man is not in the shape of a prune like you. You understand? You're in over your head. This man is going to take care of you. Show him what you got here. Show him what you got. Brian, I don't believe this. You got me, baby. <laughs> I don't believe this. Let, uh, we're we're going to take a break here. After, after he gets through with you, Frank Morrell, you're all mine, Coco Ware. You're all mine. <laughs> is special here today. Well, here comes Scotty Flamingo leading the way. He has the unified belt in hand. And Scotty, do you have him here or not? Let me tell you something, Dave Brown. I've got something to say to you and all my fans out there. I've been living a bit of a lie lately. For the last couple years, in fact. You know, I told all these people my name was Scotty Flamingo and actually it isn't. You see, I'm from a very wealthy family, and my parents, you know, sent me to the finest schools, the finest military academies as a child. When I was 16, they bought me a Corvette for my birthday, brand new. They sent me to Harvard, Harvard University to get my education, and they wanted me to go to law school. But I said, no, I want to be a professional wrestler. So they said, well, what we'll do then is 
We'll buy you your own wrestling company, and we'll let you be the big star. But I said, no, no. I want to do this on my own. I want to prove to myself that I can stand on my own two feet and do it all by myself without cheating, without their money, without breaking rules or anything like that. I was going to prove to everyone that I could do it all by myself. After the event Monday night, I feel I have accomplished that. Without cheating, without doing any of that sort of nonsense, I was able to accomplish my goals. You see, Monday night, well, actually, two weeks ago, Sensational Sherry, the beautiful, sweet, fragile lady that she is, was out here. And then Monday night, two Monday nights ago, Jerry the King Lawler took her and Powell drove her. And he tried to snap her neck. And he's a degenerate. I mean, what kind of man would do that, Dave Brown? He's just a degenerate. So she hired Papa Shango to come out and exact retribution. But she wanted to ensure, she wanted to stack the deck. So what she did was she hired Scotty Flamingo.